Hello again, how's it going guys? I'm getting itchy fingers, I can't wait to get going, but things are going to have to wait a little longer this year than they normally do. Anyway, this week I want to start out on the front lawn. And I want to show you this, and this is the aftermath of the chafer beetle. The chafer beetle is fairly new to British Columbia and it arrived in the lower mainland back in 2001 in some nursery stock from Newfoundland. Now it's not the beetle itself that does the damage to the lawn. What happens is the raccoons and the crows find the larvae of the beetle an absolute delicacy. And so at night time the raccoons will come out and start digging up the lawn trying to find the larvae. And then in the morning the crows will come along and pick away at whatever the raccoons have left. Now Sod's law dictates that if I go trying to dig one up and find one I won't be able to but uh, we'll give it a go anyway let's see what we have oh, see a couple of worms don't see a beetle here oh no here we go there we go the chafer beetle this is what the raccoons and the birds go absolutely mad for the infestation started across the Fraser River in New Westminster and in recent years it spread to the neighbouring cities such as our city, Surrey. And it's not just our lawn that the beetles have taken a fancy to, it's the whole of the area and it's driving everybody nuts. But now there's not really a lot we can do about it. Come July and August we can add nematodes which should take care of the problem. But uh, in the immediate future the best thing we can probably do is nothing at all and let the birds and let the raccoons take care of the larvae which in turn should lessen the amount of beetles that we get. I've just received four of these ceiling heat mats from Amazon and uh, that gives me a total of five so three of these are going to be going outside into the greenhouse and the other two are going to stay right here in the garage. The temperatures have warmed up a little bit over this last week and right now inside the garage under the lights the soil temperature in these microgreens is 18 degrees and that's pretty warm. At this point we don't really need any heat mats. However these temperatures could change at the drop of a hat so it's going to be handy to have these for backup. Heat mats like these don't have a thermostat on them and they can be a little bit erratic on the way that they disperse the heat and so it's said that if you put a piece of cardboard on like this and then put the tray on top of the cardboard it will help to disperse the heat more evenly. I'm not really sure that I believe that but I am willing to give it a go. I think the ones in the greenhouse I'm not going to bother with the cardboard at all. These onions were sown at the beginning of January and have germinated well. This year I've gone with a storage onion called Patterson, uh, a sweet onion, Ailsa Craig, which I grow every year. And I'm growing these white wings, which I grew for the first time last year. Another good storage onion, and even though we've eaten most of our onions, I do have a few of these left. And they are storing very, very well indeed. And so I'm probably going to grow more of these this year than I did last year. Now, I also tried to germinate some 
Kelsey and some Bedfordshire champion and the Bedfordshire champion have not done very well at all considering the sell by date on these is 20 is sorry 2022 and the Kelsey's well I've got about six or seven that have germinated this is old seed it came from Pete's backyard garden I've been pushing it a little bit however if I do get six or seven Kelsey's that'll certainly be enough I'm not growing so many big sweet onions this year I'm going along the lines more along the lines of storage onions And a little bit of an update on our microgreens here we have some sunflowers turnip mustard a broccoli blend and at the back we have some radish and some peas and at the rate we're going through microgreens right now this will probably last us about a week this year I've promised myself that I'm not going to be getting seeds going too early. In fact I'm going to wait as late as I possibly can and use the natural light to my advantage. This week though I was watching Benny L and she got some tomato seeds going, some bush tomatoes and she fully expects them to be in fruit by May. After watching that video, that's me done for, and all this waiting to sow has flown out the window. I have sown half a dozen seeds. Uh, it's a bush type too, um, specially bred to be grown in cold conditions. And apparently, they only take 40 to 59 days. Hmm. We shall see about that. Anyway, right now, I think it's time for a beer. And until next time, cheers.